Distinguished guests, welcome to another fantastic video. Today we have Tempo Mao from Legends of Runeterra. We're going to be doing a collaboration of sorts where we exchange coaching services. I coach him in League and he coaches me in Legends of Runeterra, the incredible card game that we all know and love. All right, so I would like to be coached on Vex this game. I know you have a little bit of experience with Vex. She's a little out of my comfort zone. I'd like to learn her from a control mage player. Okay, we can so, do that. So you can go and show me your rune page. We'll run through it real quick while we're in the session. Okay, so we're going to be starting off with Electrocute. So Fog, a bit Electrocute is best in slot because it has pretty much an identical cooldown timer to our Fear. So our Fear is a 25 starting off. Electrocute is also 25. So when we have oh. Fear, we pretty much always have Electrocute. Uh, for second page, if the matchup is bad, we run Taste of Blood for the additional sustain. We could assume sure. that's Lux mid because she banned Zed. Mm -hmm. So against a very long range champion, Taste of Blood is actually better than Cheap Shot. But if you're against melees or short range mid lane champions, you can go Cheap Shot for extra kill potential. Mm -hmm. If you're in a lane where you have no kill potential, you can run Zombie Ward or Ghost Poro. But for this particular game, we're always going to run Eyeball Collection because we're not good enough to go any other option up until Masters. Now, finally, Ultimate Hunter is basically what enables the most gameplay for Vex because 99% of your interactions are going to be centered around the ultimate. Mm -hmm. So whenever you get stacks, it makes it easier for you to create more opportunities or gameplay just by having that ultimate available at all given moments. Secondary page, we have quite a few options for this particular game. We're going to go Mana Flow Band, so it's the little blue one. So Mana Flow Band is great because it gives us additional mana pool, which allows us to wave clear infinitely. And then mm -hmm. Transcendence gives us extra cooldown so that we can cycle through our abilities, which also allows us to cycle through fear faster. Oh, okay. Cool. A lot of little synergies here. Yeah. So I prefer to run attack speed just because it helps with wave clear. But against long range matchups like Victor, Azir, Lux, Adaptive Force 2x is actually fine. It depends on personal preference. But if your okay. goal is to farm consistently, I would recommend just having the attack speed. Yeah, I'm not super used to her auto. So attack speed probably helps that, right? Yeah, because it makes the windup animation a little bit shorter. Okay, that helps. So pretty much the first thing we do when we're in a game like this is we do a pregame checklist, which is we assess what elements we're playing around. So our particular matchup is Vex versus Lux. Like what goes into her kit? What makes her strong? What makes her weak? When we think of mm -hmm. Lux, we think of long range. We think of poke. We think of lots of various CC, right? Things that we have mm -hmm. to play around when it comes to Lux is her E, Loose and Singularity. It's a giant moving ball that explodes. As long as we avoid that for the most part, that's where most of her damage in lane comes from. And that's going to be when we go up to last hit, that's when she should realistically throw it. Okay. Um, the other thing is if we get hit by Q, it leads up into her E and R. So it's always important that we're not getting hit by the snare. Vice versa, what does she have to play around when it comes to our kit? If she gets hit by a stray E, then she has to deal with our Q follow-up damage. Okay, so our Fear and our E are one of the easiest ways to apply our combo. Yep. Uh, if we don't have Fear, that's when we throw around individual Qs, which is something that she'll have to space accordingly for. And then eventually when we unlock 6, that's the main bread and butter of this champion. So you're going to go D-ring 2 pots. Alright, so level 1, typically what we want to do is hit the tab button. What summer spells does she have? Got the barrier. What's her key stun? <clears throat> Comet. So she's got a stronger earlier game, but she doesn't scale as much as first strike. Um, she has an extra defensive tool that we have to play around. So our goal kind of is to push the wave level one to get level two faster, which allows us to have a skill advantage. And we never, never, ever want to use our fear like that. Okay. So every single time that you throw your skills out to heal, kill minions, you don't actually have pressure to trade with Lux, even though you're stronger when it comes to trading. So right now she's on cooldown. And kind of what we're dealing with right now is that your positioning isn't what allows you to get in range just yet. Right. So we need to work on being closer Ooh. when we throw out that E to begin with. Because you're throwing at max range, which means you can just walk out of it. Mm -hmm. So every time that she used her E, you kind of just have to think to yourself that you're stronger for the next 9 seconds when it's on cooldown. So right now you can just run at her because she has nothing. And then you want to look for an E if you can. So right now, perfect. She right, got nice the try. jukes. Yeah, she do. So something to keep in mind is that your projectile speed is faster than any amount of juking that somebody can do. Mm -hmm. So do not lead your skill shots, just click directly on them. And because the projectile ah. speed's faster, you'll pretty much always land it, if not. Okay. All 
Okay, so we're stronger right now, so we should take the trade. And then we run into her full combo, and then we can disengage, pop a potion. Make sure we get that cannon. Huge. Now Let's Jarvan's playing for invade, which means we have to push mid lane. So that we're able yeah, to help him we if we need to. And help him. Exactly. So it's okay to throw your Q out when you don't have fear. It's always okay yeah. to throw Q when you don't have fear. So she's got barrier, which means no matter what, we're not going to be able to kill her unless she plays poorly. So no E for the next 8 seconds, no Q, you can throw E at max range when you have a chance. At this point, you're just going to go and recall. Mm -hmm. Skill max? A Q. That's most of our wave clear comes from that. So at this point, the only reason why we're forced to recall is just because we took some really oh heavy poke God, and we don't so know where enemy jungle is. So you're going to go boots, refillable. I'm just going to run straight back. So because we, we never buy pinks, by the way. Really? Yeah, it's a waste of money. If you're anywhere below diamonds, don't buy oh, yeah. pinks. <laughs> Doesn't give us damage. Yeah. I respect that. When I play Talon, I almost never buy Like it. If you spend 400 gold on pinks in the first 10 minutes, it delays your, your mythic by like a minute. <laughs> I see. To two minutes. Yeah, he's hit Masters in League. But sometimes you get rusty when you don't play for a while. And he's playing a new champ as well. Alright, so she hasn't recalled yet, which means you have an item advantage. So we kind of want to look for an E whenever she throws out her skills. So like right now, we just kind of run at her. Okay, so just keep in mind she has barriers, so we wait that out and then we can look yeah. for a combo. And at this point, the easiest way to confirm this is when our fear comes back up, we're just going to flash into melee range and then W. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I we gotta get up three, three seconds. So we just we don't want her crash wave, so we gotta run at her right now and then flash W. I'm getting spam things, scared of gank. You're you're in range right now, just do it. So you're gonna lose the opportunity otherwise. Woo! Okay, I mean so that works out for sure. Yeah. Probably can't get anything on the Leona, so I'm just gonna focus on the minions. Yep. So we just want to hard push and reset because we just got a bunch of money and we have no mana or health. So just use everything as fast as you can. And then we do want to try to hit as many minions as we can with our skills, just to maximize mana usage. Okay. That's pretty good. It, it is. It's excellent. Good job. So we're just going to go amp him towards Lost Chapter. You don't really ever need to build mana on this champion just because if you mm -hmm. are consistently using your skills correctly, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. We still path towards Lost Chapter because once we hit level 6, that's when we need mana to be able to wave clear for roams and stuff like that. But for right. laning phase, raw AP is just always going to be more valuable. And we are going to end up going Ludens this game? Against this team comp? Pretty much, yes. Cool. So Ludens cool, is cool. best in slot just because it synergizes best with your identity, but a lot of times you're forced to build Everfrost or Leandres, depending mm -hmm. on when you draft. So our goal is at 6 first. We already know where the jungle is, so placing a ward doesn't matter. So just full clear it. You're going to hit 6, and then you can just pretty much run into their jungle if you want to try and kill Graves. Yeah, he should be on Rugs heading to Raptors next. Alright, just run just straight down, bottom. and you just gank bomb. So don't go for River, go through the jungle. Mm -hmm. And if there's a Blast Cone, you instantly win. Yeah, so Blast Cone over the wall, don't go for Try. Because if you go for Try and it's warded, then they already know. Now that you're behind, just look for the ult angle. Just go, they're probably recalling right now. Okay. Damn. So when you're already behind somebody, mm -hmm. you don't need to lead with your risky ult combo like that. Because you can just run straight at them and melee W, and it's a guaranteed like follow-up combo. Okay. Because if you think about it objectively, when you throw it at max range, you're giving them a chance to dodge it. Whereas if you lead yeah, into flash. melee, there's no way to dodge yeah. it. So we coin flip it, and then it makes it hard to get that triple kill off of it. Mm-hmm. I, but, I could literally just walk, like, I have all the time in the world there, right, is what you're saying. I could walk yeah. up, W, even melee E. Because they have to move for you to get the safety. They can't mm -hmm. ignore you. But the exactly. moment we lead that ult, we just lose a lot of potential. Right. So it comes Pressure down to tempo. Yeah. So Ooh, tempo is the me? speed at which you, you play a situation at. So if there's a lot mm -hmm. of space to work with, you can slow down and take your time to, like, maximize DPS. But if you only have, mm -hmm. like, two seconds of time to work with, that's when you got to speed your, your mm -hmm. process up. So, right. we need to wait for... yeah, just hard push. With Jarvan's coming, so you technically can just freeze it and wait for him. 
Someone's right behind him too. Okay, then we just full clear. We don't want to face tank this damage. Okay, just run at her. If we land E, she gets slowed and it lands EQ. Just kidding. Got a party? Yeah, a bit of a party. W it? So just want to prevent damage because now you get ulted. It's all good. We'll just try to do our best to wave clear at this point and then we're going to look for a recall. Woohoo! So it's a cannon wave right now. It's the one wave that you do want to recall on. Can you tell mm -hmm. me why that is? Because it's harder for her to push it back into tower. That is correct. And make, so, it, make me miss the XP, yeah. Yeah, it's the best wave to leave on because you lose a lot less than if we we're a normal wave. Because in order for her mm -hmm. to push, she has to kill 1000 HP cannon. And then her cannon also has to die to tower. Right. So more often than not, when you leave on cannon wave, you lose anywhere from one mm -hmm. or zero to three minions, depending on if you have tier two boots. Mm -hmm. But it's better than losing six minions, right? To lose two. For sure, yeah. So we pretty it's much like lost three Harold's. right there. And she's got a lot of wave clear, so it makes sense that we lose more. But here right, we're just right. going to hard push mid. And uh, we're going to run straight bottom again after pushing this way. This is what you do in every single game as a Vex, is you push mid, run through the bot side jungle. If you go for river, a lot of times you get awful angles, so you just always go for jungle. Mm -hmm. Specifically when you're playing on this side of the map. If you're playing the other side of the map, it's almost impossible to gank bot side. And then again, if we get behind her, no, what we're going to do is lead with W. We do not want to lead with ult unless... Because she can just ult it. Okay, so we're going to look for an E at this point. You can also just W. Okay, good job. And at this point... Ah! Yo, no one told me League is a horror game. That scared the hell out of me. It did. All right, tier two boots. And we're just going to go and stay with Warding Totem as well. Okay. Emax second or W? W second. Hog. We appreciate the help. Say meow in chat right now. And Yes, coach. You recalled on a cannon wave, so you're losing pretty much nothing because she slow pushed. So you got your bot lane a 700 gold lead. Mm -hmm. You lost 300 gold yourself because you died to the Lux, but the plates they also got another 375. You're like infinitely head bot side. And bot lane's the only rule that matters, right? Exactly. It's a gap every game. 100%. Dude, okay. I really like this attack speed rune, actually. It's felt really good in the early game. It was yeah. a good shout. 100p. Alright, so again, we just push, and then uh, we're going to wait for the next wave this time, and then we're going to push that one as well before we go for a roam. Okay. Alright, so you can go meet the wave as it comes in, so that way you have more time to work with. Because when you wait for it to come to you, then you're just losing valuable seconds. Mm -hmm. And then try to hit the entire wave with E, not just the back line, if you can. So the e, the, the e grows as you throw it from farther away, so you kind of want to lead oh. it from a larger distance. You should be fine here. You can just trade with her. In fact, I'm pretty sure you just kill her. As long as you don't full combo by it. Okay. Huge Darvin ult. Okay, we just disengage entirely now. Yeah, this guy's here too. Okay, so we're just going to go and full clear the wave. As long as Set's here, he's losing stuff top lane, so just EQ the mm -hmm. back lane, and then we're going to recall. Now, I would recommend jumping into her, but she's got barrier, which means we cannot do that. Right. Always have to keep the summoner in mind. Yeah. That's why we right. got to identify it to begin with at the start of the game, where they're starting mm -hmm. keep it in our mental. Yeah. Exactly. So you could technically push one more wave, but this is a fine recall just because you have blasting. Because mm -hmm. if she does stay and pushes one wave, you just lose six minions entirely. Right, so it kind of depends on what she wants to do. Yeah, you want to recall no matter what, but her matching you is technically bad because you lose nothing for recalling now. Mm-hmm. Alright, so once again, we get mid lane, we're going to hard push it, and then we're going to walk towards the side lane. Okay. When you're playing against long-range matchups where you don't have kill pressure, you just perma roam, because there's nothing else you can do. I like that play style. Mm-hmm. Guess we need to cast from a bit farther, that way it hits everyone. Yeah, Huge. I've never played Vex before. I think like one AI game. Okay, so I don't crazy. Know the nitty gritty like that. All right, we run for jungle again. Don't go for river. Oh yeah. 
good angles, good angles. And if we have Blast Cone, we take Blast Cone, because we go through Tribush Vision without being seen. I could probably catch her even on tower. Oh, there's Graves here. I have a couple seconds to pull this off. Flash W? Yeah. Okay, you're fucking and walk sick. Alright, so you're gonna go. clear bottom now. Just stay bottom and full clear. Yeah. And uh, you take this tower they for free. Mid. You're about to get yeah. so much cash money. Only one nearby is Graves that I have to worry about. I saw Leona earlier. Lux is on mid. Try okay. to hit everything. Do Huge. that. W all that. Don't miss cannon. With an auto. Fucking insane. Incredible. Okay, so we could technically yes, run towards this just because we have ultimate available. Yeah, 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 yeah. And priority target is their backline. We don't want to get the Leon unless it's a reset. Okay, you can go for it. Okay, now onto Graves. Perfect. And really great use of your, your W. You walked behind him to push him towards your teammates. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was intentional or if that... Sec. Okay. <laughs> You reset here. Baby you reset here. You've got 2,000 gold. Yeah, probably can't really help much anyways. If the enemies commit to something, then... You just don't want to overstay. Yeah. We're we on uh, Ludens as well. Yeah, so Ludens, and then we grab Ruby Amp. You can also go uh, Amp Tome and Dark Seal. Probably better. It's going to be in all items. And then we're going to swap to a Blue Trinket as well, if we can. And then just run straight towards mid. And if nothing happens mid, you just start walking towards bottom instead. She has no ulti. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's Should go. Should be a free double, actually. Yeah, cancelled. Okay, we keep fighting. We look for max range E. Maybe catch her with a stray? Oh! Got her with a stray? She has to hold that. Steal the cannon from Jin. We're gaming, we're gaming. Absolutely gaming. We don't need to put a word here, because we're not... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Since, I'm hard push mid, hard push mid. Hard push mid. So the one thing you gotta it. do is, you've wasted three words this game, because you're just wording for the sake of wording, but they're not meaningful mm -hmm. words. So it's hard mm -hmm. push, full tempo. You want to put as much pressure as you can on this tower. You don't have vision of four people on the map right now, but you do have bot side vision, so we just want to hug the bottom. Yeah, especially with Seraphine here. Yeah, nice and you do, you do want to hit the tower. Okay, now you can use Blue Trinket. Where? On the Rift Trail play. I'd use it on the bush, pixel bush. Yeah. Okay, and now we look for an ult. I think they just kill him. Okay, go on her instead. Okay, so you want to E before you Q in this situation. And then just look for okay. another ult. Just yellow it towards wolves or something. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the bush in case someone's there. Okay. Yellow it, love it. It's gonna run out anyways. Now technically it does recharge faster if you don't throw it just because uh, you gotta wait for it to fizzle out before it disappears for the cooldown. So you do lose like 2-3 seconds if you throw it at like the last second. Mm. Okay, so we should be able to take tower here and we can just convert yeah. that. They won't be able to contest dragon realistically but you can just walk down if you feel like he's gonna need it. Yep, getting two objectives at once, like mm -hmm. that. Oh, three objectives! Yeah, and we just reset, we sell refillable, we buy rod. And the reason why we do these consistent recalls is to make sure that we're always at the strongest potential we can be. Because mm -hmm. if we fight during the moments we're sitting at 1,000, 2,000 gold, we're just giving them a chance to get back in. Yeah. Rod first, always go big item if you can. Because this way, when you reset the next time, even if you fuck up your recall, it's pretty easy to buy a 400 gold ruby or a 600 hey. gold. Alternator. Also, you just get more AP this way. Oh, they just surrendered. Okay. <laughs> I guess you're just too good, bro. You're fucking clean out of your mind. It was the wheel. The wheel said I win. Yeah, the wheel did say you won. So pretty much we've identified what our mid lane matchup is. We have to play around Comet Poke. We have to play around her E. We have to avoid getting hit by Q since it leads into everything else. And you have to play around your passive and your E. Um, level 1 through 3 is sometimes the most important for champions like Vex who are trying to convert damage into kills. So when we don't do anything from level 1 through 2, it makes it a lot harder to play the, the, the lane out. Because mm -hmm. the idea is that you can take advantage of the fact that you do 200 damage on a basic combo versus at most 100 from her. So even if we mm -hmm. trade equally 100 for 100, 
It technically favors us because we have more kill potential. If I do 300 damage on a combo and she does 150, the person with more damage is just going to win the 1v1 at that, that point. Right. So my goal is to burn these potions. So we're both D-ring two pots, which means we both have 310 HP from items versus 310. So nobody technically has an advantage besides range for Lux. But if I burn this health pool, she can't heal after that, which is what we're trying to accomplish level one through three. Because that way I can at least try to convert it into a, a kill. Okay, it's a resource game. It is a resource game. When you're in matchups gotcha. where you cannot get kills, you focus more on mana resources, but your goal as a, a snowball mage, skirmish mage, is to fight and convert to kills. Mm -hmm. So if I can't do that mid lane, I have to do that elsewhere, which is why we just keep perma roaming bottom after wave push. Because we lose nothing for doing it, but we can at least get our advantage. So here, when I say to auto for level 2, it's so that we can hit level 2 faster to get 2 skills versus 1. But the issue is that when we lead with E onto the back wave like this, uh, we're basically vulnerable for the next 14 seconds, 13 seconds. And then we don't have fear for 25. Mm -hmm. So this is a major tempo loss because during this period of time, she's always stronger than us because she has that range advantage. So we need to use it as a deterrent, but also as a way to segue into like a trade. But when we do this, mm -hmm. we're basically, we can't do anything. We just lose tempo because the whole point, right, was to get damage in early. How do I get damage in if I can't do anything for 14 seconds? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So if we want to create a situation where we can always land a skill shot, that is when they go up to last hit. So this is called a last hit window. Yeah. So during the animation, like force the wind up. Yeah. So she's okay. pathing towards this. This is when we would throw our E, so it goes from being a coin flip at max range to being an 80-20. So we can land it consistently 80% of the time if they don't play around missing a last hit. Now the issue here is that we both have to trade autos on these minions, so I probably would not have been able to go for it unless I gave up the minion. Mm -hmm. But regardless, I want to throw my E when it's valuable or when it's efficient, not when it's just a gamble, which is what we mm -hmm. did the first like three E uses. So when it's our turn to last hit, we pretty much want to create as much distance as we can because we're trying to play around her E. So obviously the projectile speed is pretty slow, so if we're playing at max range, we can just walk out of it before it lands. But she's going to try to do the same thing to us, which is when we go to right click, she's going to try to throw her E because it's pretty consistent, right? Yes. So like right now, I get my auto. I technically am way too close for this. Mm-hmm. Because right now, I can't pressure this minion anyways because I don't have E. So instead of farming it at melee range, I could farm it from here, I could farm it from here, I could farm it from here. But I'm 100% in E range right now just because I'm standing exactly where I autoed the first minion. So the reason why you're taking damage here is because you're technically pathing into her instead of creating space between the two of you when you're weaker. I'd but now, that. she's on an 8 second cooldown. So there's 8 seconds where you are stronger in every capacity. So this is when we want to make this rope shorter. We call this a tether. This is how we gauge maximum distance. And the way that we apply this is we just think about what is the max range of every single skill that a champion has. So mm -hmm. this is her E range. This is probably your E range. But she doesn't have E right now, so her actual range is like this. Because mm -hmm. it's only autos? Because it's only autos. So during mm -hmm. this time frame of 8 seconds, I technically have more range options than her. So I have two options. I can lead in with an auto. This is the easiest way to proc electrocute combo and the fastest way to do it. But the thing is, because she naturally outranges us more often than not in situations like this, we're going to just do short combos and not really play around electrocute as much, unless we're just infinitely stronger. Right. So E auto, we don't get electrocute, but we're not giving her a chance to do damage back because during the fear, we're just getting out after we proc auto. Mm -hmm. But if I go for auto E auto, I'm letting her hit me back the entire time if I mess it up on the back end. So here, yeah. we have 8 seconds to get closer, so that way she can't just dodge it like this at max range. Right, right. Or alternatively, we have 8 seconds to wait for her to go for this last hit and then confirm it that way. Mm -hmm. So again, we use our E like that, we are now sitting on a 13 second cooldown. And she's stronger than us, so when I go up to last hit these minions in an average Masters game, they're going to punish you on that. Or mm -hmm. they'll throw an E, they'll throw an auto attack. It's really, really bad to miss skill shots early on, especially when it makes up most of your gameplay. Mm -hmm. So I find it difficult to approach this minion because at this point I'm trading 13 gold for like 100 damage. 
Which, yeah, literally. Which is he's back yeah. up. Now she fucks up because she doesn't understand Lasset Windows herself. <laughs> the goal is cool. to create more opportunities for yourself to succeed so that we can play the game the way we want to. Mm -hmm. So it's all about being proactive, because if I understand when a minion's about to die on both sides, not only can I protect myself, I can put myself in a position where I can aggress on the enemy. Because if she goes up to right-click this minion with no E and I'm standing over here, am I close enough to combo her? In this new spot over here on the X? Who will? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, I'm too far, right? Yes. So if I know that this minion's gonna die next, I need to make sure that I'm kind of in a range where I can defend myself, but I can quickly get in a position if I need to. If I don't identify these windows of opportunity, then I'm not gonna be able to proactively get in position to begin with. Mm -hmm. So here, she's pathing into you right now. She has literally no E. So you could start auto-trading here if you want to and run her down with Looming Darkness. But yeah, you try see to get an electrocute proc in there too. Yeah, but you're running away exactly. here when you have uh -huh. you, you're stronger because you're one uh -huh. skill advantage. Even if she trades damage equally, it still comes out in your favor because you have that kill window advantage and you have a Jarvan that's early game. But creating distance here is really, really bad. Because mm -hmm. now we lost a chance to do 250 damage, which would have burned both her potions. Mm -hmm. And then we wait for her cooldowns to come back up, and if we trade when they come back up, then it's just kind of griefing. So we hit level 2 first, which is fantastic. And you play this really, really well. Yay, so she burns her you. E, and yeah. we now know again that she has nothing available. Uh huh. And this is when we want to look to take advantage of this. So yeah, right now, the level advantage. Uh -huh. realistically, there's really no reason why she should ever trade 250 health to go for these minions. Because you have a level mm -hmm. advantage, but they're going to do it anyways because they don't know enough to know that's bad. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was just going to sit on tower and wait for crash, because you kind of have to with the level deficit, but yeah, I miss. Yeah, so she gave you a chance to get 300 damage here. Yeah. Uh, we misplay because we're not familiar with casting our E quite yet, which is understandable. But when we lose out on 300 damage like this, this affects the way we play level 2, affects the way we play level 3, and, and so forth. Oh yeah, this dictates the pace of a lot of the early game now. Th yeah. This play right here. Mm -hmm. It's like pivotal. Because you pretty much would have been able to solo kill her without burning your flash ignite earlier mm -hmm. if you just traded better. Because mm -hmm. we take this damage deficit and then we continue to build up on it momentum wise, and then you convert that to a kill when you have enough damage. Yep. Because right now, you if right. I flash WEQ, I do about 300 damage without oh, ignite. Noob Vex. Yeah, don't watch. Oh, man. So right now, she's stronger than us. She should have looked for an E, but she didn't. Lane's. Kind of in a decent position for us. But if we are going to push really aggressively like this, we do want to put a ward down on the ramp entrance if we can. But that's kind of the thing. Like, when you play League of Legends as a mid laner, you have to know where the jungle starts. Yes. Because yeah. if this was something like a Kindred or a Jarvan, and you were pathed up like this, you burn flash every single time. Mm hmm So we didn't identify where the jungle started because we didn't think about thinking about that. So... Yeah, yeah. If we put this into our checklist, which is 130 every single game, you have to ask yourself this question, where is my jungle and where is the enemy jungle? Mm -hmm. So we come back to lane, we're both equal. She froze at her E, so next 10 seconds you have an advantage. We're not trying to minimize space when we're stronger, so that's kind of a missed opportunity because she is playing very aggressively with her autos. And then we go in when she has E up again. That's true, yeah, I take two E's without trading anything back. Yeah, so cooldown windows are something that definitely affects the way we play Tether, right? Because if I'm placing this range based off skills that are available, I have to be keeping tabs on when these skills are actually up or not. Mm -hmm. The moment I think, oh, she has no Q, she has no E, that's when I think to myself, am I stronger, am I weaker? But here, she's giving you a chance to do damage back, right? Because mm -hmm. realistically, she can just max range you here, get 200 damage for zero and then walk away, and that's a favorable trade for her. But because she's extending the trade, because she's trying to get more damage in, she's giving you a chance to do damage back. So if she just QE'd auto you at max range, or just QE'd, it's like 180, right? For zero. Mm -hmm. But the moment she trades back, she gets another auto in, which pops Illumination, goes up to 240, and then you get to do 200 damage back. So like, which mm -hmm. one of these is obviously better for you? Yeah, us netting the... Uh the uh, 240 over 200. 
Yeah, because we're getting damage back in. She gave us the chance to do damage back so she could get 60 more. But this damage isn't always great for Luxus. Now, right. you are outranged, and if she's a 10 times better player, like that is a meaningful trade, I guess, but she does allow herself to get ganked by Jarvan or you if she plays really risky trades like that. Mm -hmm. So this is great for you because, again, you just outvalue her on this trade because she's pathing towards you. Thank God I actually hit her with stuff. Let's go! Yeah, huge. <laughs> so you converted a big, big damage lead. So you and went from being behind. Huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is fantastic for you. That basically brought you back into this lane after a lot of early mistakes. But had you landed those first two or three EQs, she would probably be like 100 HP right now. Yeah, yeah. My mind was there. The mechanics weren't yet. Indubitably. Okay, so we continue onwards. And really the only other thing I want to talk about is kind of the opportunity you had the solo killer. So this isn't like the best situation to recall because you are risking losing six minions straight up. But because we burned all of our resources and we had that range deficit and Jarvan was showing bottom, we just kind of had the recall. Yeah. Now the good news is I don't think you lost much here because she slow pushed and the minion wave was technically on your side. So let's go back and look at this. So because yeah. you successfully crashed this wave, this opened up the ability to recall. Because what happens here is that these minions that are coming in from the left are going to aggro on, and you'll see the shape that they make after aggroing on is they're going to be more compact. Mm -hmm. So as a result of this, all six of these minions are going to go into combat before your minion wave even arrives. So just go ahead and watch. Mm -hmm. So all six of these minions have already gone into combat. These ranged have not even hit a single time yet. Right, yeah. So that's why we try to crash waves, is so that we can get this wave push back towards us. Because if we had Jarvan hovering after Crab, or if we had an HP lead, she's forced to move into us. Mm hmm So... She, does she know where Jarvan is at this point? Um, Jarvan should have showed on Vision bot side, and if her mm -hmm. jungle is doing top Crab, then Jarvan has to be bot Crab. Mm hmm So she has to respect this? For the most part, yes. So she plays it slow because she's worried about getting ganked, and then you end up not losing anything at all. So we get back here. She can't leave because you mm -hmm. can freeze the wave. And this is an insane positioning for you because you have an item advantage and she has half health and a deficit in terms of items. So this is where you pretty much instantly win the game just because you had a good recall timing and she overstayed because she has mm -hmm. no TP. So we have to look for trades right now because if she successfully crashes this wave, you can't hold it for a freeze because you're just going to take too much damage. It's way too big. Mm -hmm. So every time that she goes up to last hit a minion or fro ease, you have to be pressuring her positioning wise. Mm -hmm. But every time she moves forward here, you keep widening the gap. It doesn't matter if you take damage here. You're mm -hmm. trying to either force her to fight you or force her to like leave the lane alone. Because if I'm standing here or here, she can't E me and the minion wave at the same time. <clears throat> She's got to pick right. one. Yeah, and she picks one, and that gives us a window. Uh huh. Exactly. Okay. So here, this ends up being really good for us. We get the E, and at this point, we full commit. We pop the ignite early. Um, igniting early is always good because it means you're just getting the full length of the damage before you go to tower. Yeah. Sometimes that makes the difference between living off a level or living off of like triumph proc. Mhm. Mm That's true. Mhm. Mm Okay, so kind of an awkward situation. Yeah, because yeah. we, we face tanked all those minions for a hot minute. But the good news is we burned her, her barrier, and we 100% we always kill her off flash play. So what it yep. comes down to is, can we get the flash play in? And the way that we approach this is the moment you have W up, you should just basically be running at her because she just used her Q. That's true, yeah. Because you could throw E at max range, and if she flashes it, you get a free summon advantage. And if she doesn't, you get a kill. Alternatively, you just flash W. So here, you are quite literally in range of the flash W already. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue here is that when you go for the flash W, you don't combo fast enough, and she ends up flashing after it. Mm -hmm. And that's just because you over-respected your teammate's pings. That's true. And if you had just flash W'd here, she would have been dead anyways. Yeah, yeah, him spam pinging kind of through a wrench in my mindset all right so she's got no q now yeah. so you're in range of flash w mm -hmm. you wait until the entire duration of your fear to run out before you even threw the eq mm -hmm. i see that yeah, I, I slipped in auto in instead yeah because you can <laughs> auto on the back end but when it comes to this 
Your fear only lasts so long. 0.475 seconds. Like, that uh -huh. is enough time to land your EQ and do 300 damage, 100%. Mm -hmm. So, this is a situation where you played the tempo slow. You tried to extend the combo by adding in those autos for maximum DPS. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a situation where you needed to play the tempo slow. You had to play it fast yeah. here. Yeah. Because you're working on a time crunch. Now, this goes towards your favor because Jarvan has a really great rotate here. Really fantastic. At this point, you've basically won lane because you now have a gold advantage mm -hmm. off of having that assist. You're going to get an entire minion wave for yourself. You're going to get the next minion wave, which is 250 gold combined. Each wave is 125. And you're also denying her a minion wave. So this is pretty much a 700 gold swing off this play. Mm -hmm. Just because you took it. Because if you let her recall, you would not have converted that entire thing into anything meaningful. So here... Makes sense. Our goal is tempo with the momentum. We need to shove this in as fast as we can because the faster we push it, the faster it goes in tower range, the more CS she loses. If we play mm -hmm. this slow, then she's going to get more minions than not. So you're sitting on EQ right now for almost three seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, had we cast it at three seconds ago, it would almost be up again. And then you could Q again. Because mana mm -hmm. isn't the issue here. <laughs> it's just getting it pushed in before it's too late. Mm -hmm. So... Now, this is a double-edged sword, because if I push this in faster, this also means I get to reset faster, which means I get back to lane faster. Because the keep four the to five going. seconds keep the tempo going. Because mm -hmm. if I get here faster, I can do another wave crash and then go look for a roam. Because every right. time I'm off the map, I'm giving them a chance to have number advantage on whatever play that's happening. Mm -hmm. So we continue onwards, we recall. We've got a pretty significant advantage now. We're 1.7 versus 1.4. Wave is slow pushing back to you. You know she has no flash. So if Wave is going to slow push into you, that means you can default the Wave to stand here. And then every single time she goes up to walk hit or last hit, she's got to run this entire duration back to her tower. This entire distance is going to take her like six seconds if she's ever out of position. Mm -hmm. Now this also means that she's vulnerable to ganks, right? Anybody can run mid here when she's slow pushing in your tower. So she has to respect this because she does not have boots, mm -hmm. she does not have flash, she does not have mm -hmm. barrier. She went tier, which means that she just has a bunch of wave clear potential. Mm -hmm. You put a ward down here, it doesn't matter because you already saw graves down here. Mm -hmm. So you basically just wasted like 40 seconds of this ward. Yeah, I'll probably see him on try as well. Yeah. So it's not the most efficient ward, like it has a purpose which is to dissuade a gank, but at that point... If I put it here, I can just ult in on the graves, or I can use this as like advanced warning if I'm playing aggressively. This is kind of a shallow ward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to do pixel, but I was like, oh, I'm going to miss cannon XP. Yeah, but warning is based on where you are in your wave or what you're trying to do with the wave. If mm -hmm. I don't have time to run this pixel ward because I'm in lane right now, that's fine. But like this ward didn't matter anyways, just because mm -hmm. we had that information already. Exactly. So, yeah. so this should be an instant win the moment you engage this roam. Because you fast push that wave, look at where the wave is. So it's 620. Between one and two, yeah. So let's think about when the waves actually crash here. So because you pushed it perfectly, you got nine seconds of free time to run all the way over here. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. And this is where you technically threw the game. You should have won the game instantaneously right here. Mm -hmm. So they have to run all the way back to tower and they have to either move for you or go for river. Yep. So the moment we 50-50 that ult, um, our gameplay opportunities just immediately go downhill. Mm -hmm. So this is the fastest tempo situation, like throwing that ult and landing it, huge, fantastic. But they still have mm -hmm. to move through us here. And as a result of the way that we played it, we lost a bunch of pressure. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, we never should have been given a kill here. They ego us, and we get a turnaround kill. Because what happens if Lux just stayed mid there? Uh, I lose a lot of minions on tower. Yeah, so you lose two waves, 250, and yep. she gets a plate. You lose another 175. So opportunity cost is when you are recognizing what you're losing for a potential play. Mm -hmm. So you set up a great situation where you were losing nothing at the beginning for a chance mm -hmm. at getting 900 gold. True. So this was like a 66% chance of getting 900 gold and maybe losing 125. Mm -hmm. But because of like the way that odds. you... Yeah, it's a great play to make. Like, this is 100% worth doing. But because of mis-execution and then mm -hmm. 
if Lux had stayed mid lane, we would have just went down 300 gold for nothing. Mm -hmm. So Graves giving you this kill basically made this play worth it, and she got nothing mid lane in the meantime, because mm -hmm. she followed. So as a control mage, it's always important to understand that if you're going to allow the enemy to roam, you have to punish them for leaving. Or better yeah. yet, make it to where they cannot leave to begin with by putting pressure on the wave. Mm -hmm. So this ends up being Q Trust, and this is pretty much what gives us our lost chapter reset. But again, we yeah. lost out on 600 gold, theoretically. Yeah, Lux lost a lot too for coming late and accomplishing nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's slow pushing towards you as well. So this is what makes it god tier for you, because you basically lost at most four minions to be gone for almost yeah, a minute. Yeah, I see. So you're now up 500 gold almost. It's going to be 500 after you clear the wave fully. And then here, you're just facing the minions. I would have just cleared this instantly myself. Um, you can't hold this wave because you take a look at where your minion wave is. It's just way too far. Mm -hmm. So if you just sit here face tank, you're going to lose 300 health. It's good to set up this gank for your jungler. Yeah, I was trying to bait it. I think... I don't remember if this worked or not. Yeah, she walks up too close. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> Let's go, Jarvan. Oh, JK. Yeah. So this she ended up being really awkward. It. Yeah, I guess that was kind of a tell. If she's going to walk up and do that, that means she probably has reinforcements as well. Yeah, and then here you just take way too much damage and this fucks you up. Because yeah. even though you're stronger, you took like three back-to-back -back E's. <laughs> And mm -hmm. then a full combo. Oh, so, I could have died there. Yeah, so now we have the reset. We come back to lane again. Mm -hmm. We lost two minions at most, so we're actually quite good. And again, she's on a recall right now because she has to go spend her money. So you have the ability to rotate first, or you can hard push this wave and do another roam. So we know Leon is top, which means that there's no fucking way that Zaya ever is able to stay under tower like this. Mm -hmm. So we initiate the room again. If you stay for plates, you get nothing because she just full clears it with one E, which is why we have to roam here. That's true. Now, technically speaking, you can go this way. I probably would have gone this way myself because, you know, it's a little bit less risky, but we have full information on where their entire team is. Mm -hmm. So if you cut off her escape route, she literally cannot run through you because she's going into you. Yeah. Because when we go for this, there's always that risk because this is a ward that they always place, a tribush ward. Mm -hmm. That's why blast coding is always good because you are turning this. Because if you walk through this way, they see you as soon as this. They have an extra three seconds to react. You blast mm -hmm. cone over, this, the earliest they see you is here. They have like six sec seven le seconds less to react to it. Yeah. Which is why it's Omega Pog. Omega Pog power position. Omega Pog. Yes. So here, I didn't want to lead with ult because I didn't know she had ult or not. So, yeah. Like, leading with W is the safest play, but if we force her to ult early enough, then we can ult after that. Mm -hmm. So, ends up being a good play for us. We get 300 gold. Only way we could have made this better is if we did not die here. Because <laughs> then yep. we would have been up 600 gold. Mm -hmm. But for landing. I think you did a really, really smooth job. You took advantage of a lot of good windows. You played your execution really well after the 10 minute mark. Mm -hmm. Good job, sir. Hey, much appreciated. And all the stuff that I messed up on, you know, I appreciate the insight. It is an absolute pleasure, King. So what should, what should my thought process be when I'm trying to improve at Legends and Runeterra? Should I just so play as many games? Should I just focus on mastering <laughs> a deck? What do you think is best? Yes, it's picking one deck that you enjoy, playing it over the course of fan, uh, like 5, 10, 15, you know, really, really play one deck. Focus on yourself first, your win cons, how you're going to win each game, matchup stuff, and then passively also observe the opponent. What are they doing? You don't really have to focus on the opponent too much at first, especially when you're learning, because then you're just going to get jumbled with all the information. What you want to do is focus on yourself and then learn passively what happens when the opponent is playing the game and they're trying to play around you. That okay. way you gain knowledge over the course of, you know, I said 5, 10, 15 games build the experience yes because the issue that i'm having right now is because there's kind of a barrier of entry where i don't quite mm -hmm. know what cards are in the game yet or what yes. i'm playing against so it makes it harder for me to make decisions until i get familiar with what is being played in general exactly all right so first thing we want to do during mulligan phase is click on the opponent's deck and see what they're playing uh how do i do that top right it's like their deck is on the mat 
Oh, the deck. Oh, what the fuck am I clicking right <laughs> now? <laughs> okay. Menu. So misfortune, twisted fate. All right, that is an aggro deck. You can keep this hand. Um, All of it, except. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's too late now. It's okay. I got a better cards anyway, so ends up being a huge plus one. Mhm. Mm you want removal, and you want the East Tally Sentinel. East Tally Sentinel is a life steal unit, which is Point really good against higher. aggro. Okay. We want to play slow. Our primary focus is just going to be preventing damage. Right, so if, on turn two, yeah, it's definitely I, catalyzer. All right, so I can just build up my darkness charges. Yep. Darkness, we'll see if she trades into it. Mm -hmm. And we're fine taking the trade as well. Even though our unit has higher attack, so it looks Sleep like we're trading down, it's giving us a buff to darkness, which will scale oh. infinitely into the game. And we're also preventing two damage. That's the important part. When playing against aggro, you have to take every single possible action that you can to prevent damage on your face. I just realized I'm playing against myself. Oh yeah, I got Vagar in the little yeah. mech suit. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a right. really cool board. So I have a situation here where I technically could put mana into my spell mana or I can just develop my board with Dark Bulb and get Darkness. I imagine building a board is always better against aggro. Correct. That okay. way you have blockers. Yep. Because they can develop and then open attack, and you won't be able to develop anything. So you want to do units first, and then spells after. That is okay. your priority, yep. So I technically could just remove board right now, or I could just pass and put that in the spell mana for next turn. Correct. Uh, here, House Spider's not really super threatening to us. What we could do is if the board just stays as is, is if they open attack, we block 2-2 two, two to 2-2 two, two and Pokey Stick 1-1, one, one, taking no damage for their next attack turn. So we're pretty happy just floating the mana. Okay. Because I could so also I right. could gauge an attack and force, but then I lose my blocker. Correct, yeah. You want to play defensively. You don't have to attack with them. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Deal one to my supported ally, grant me. Okay. Yeah, that is actually a pretty scary unit. We should quietest that right now. Because they only have one mana. There's no way they actually have something Correct. to stop this from happening. Yep. That's what the I don't like about was... LOR is that like you have to track mm -hmm. mana usage and like remember mm -hmm. what cards counter what. Yes, yes. There's a lot of layers to it. You're definitely right on that. So as long as they play below three, we shouldn't have any of our stuff interacted with because for three they can kill their unit to deal three to anything as a response. So that's going to be the magic number for us in terms of removal. So I'm thinking about just playing uh, Vagar, just because there's a lot of HP and I can absorb multiple whole hits, or I can just keep upgrading my darkness. For this action, uh, I don't think you really have to do anything. I think you could just pass and maybe get a Withering Whale and see what they do next. You want to get one more action out of them, if possible. Instead of developing a Twisted Catalyzer right now. Catalyzer gives us Poke and Stick at fast speed if they attack, or Darkness at slow speed if they develop, so that is a very flexible play. I think Vagar is high commitment, and Catalyzer is flexible. And Whereas Withering is Whale is I just kill everything when they attack. <laughs> yes. Alright. Those are the three possible plays. All are good, all have their own merit, so it depends on what you want to do. There's attack. Yep, block most. You can Withering, or you can Pokey the 2-1, and be pretty happy taking 3 damage this turn. Did you already see my card? No, he doesn't see it until it's committed. Okay. I think it's Pokey 2-1 for sure. I feel like I'm fine with this just because I have really good removal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're only taking 2, and you're drawing a card. Ooh. This is huge, actually. I need it stilted. Yep, because then your darknesses are going to be discounted, way more mana efficient. Can I develop Catalyzer now? Yes. Give me your Mally's creatures of doom! Because my other option is I save the mana and then I play Roadmaker and then I can darkness anything I want on board. Correct. That is the correct line to play. Was the Roadmaker play? Roadmaker or now. Okay. Because then your darkness is going to get discounted to two, and you can cast it this turn while developing a three four, which is a really beefy unit for aggro to deal with. This guy's doomed. I'm going to straight up murder this butcher. <laughs> I have my orders.
All right, do I ever pass? I mean, it's slow, so I can't do it if he's attacking, so I kind of want to just kill it now. Oh, it's my turn to attack, though. I could just technically... <laughs> I keep letting him develop. No, I'm just going to do it. I don't think he has an answer to this as an aggro deck. We'll find out. If he keeps playing 1-1s, one -one, I just went off Withering Whale anyways. Correct. And then... And since it's fast speed, that's always something you can do as a response to their attack action. So honestly, the pressure's on them. You're just chilling. And he can't develop anything because I could just mini morph a big summon. Mm hmm It's insane. But I also get to generate a darkness when I play Vagar next turn. Mm -hmm. I know, you're playing very mana efficient this game. Because you can do Vagar on your turn 6. That gives you the 2 mana left over to darkness. Do you think it's ever worth trading 1 for 1 here? Uh, with the 3-2, no. With the 3-4, yes. 3-4 swinging is good. Because you either push 3 damage if they don't want to lose anything, or they lose a potential attacker. Bonk. Bonk. This guy's doomed. It is looking pretty nice. If they've done only 2 damage by turn 6, they're so far behind. Ooh, stun my... Mm. Dead in their tracks. Stun the boy? That's not a big deal. Develop blocker, get darkness. Yep. I could have also waited on Withering Whale, right? If you wanted to. I, I like blocker, though, as well. What is... I'm gonna remove all the 2-2s two -two so that way I can Withering Whale next turn. Yep, perfect. Yo, my darkness is huge. Uh, so, it is my turn next. I could play Catalyzer so that I could open swing, or I can just remove Twisted Fate. Mm -hmm. Both good options. Both have merit. There's no bad play. Or you can also do Otterpus. Just have like a little 1-1 one -one and prank their hand. Or is that Otterpus? It yeah, is it is Otterpus. I'm gonna That's see what he has good. in his hand and gives me information. Mm -hmm. Yes. You get to see half his hand, and mess with him. Oh, this is... <laughs> Eight mana cost decimate? Yeah, that's gonna do real well for you, friend. <laughs> that is so doomed, especially if he wants to combo that with other damage. Honestly, um, I'm thinking about open swinging then withering whale, or withering whale onto open swing. I have a pretty crazy idea. I think you can always do withering on their attack call. Okay. So if you want to play the turn as I slow, get and darkness as into possible, dark bulb into darkness into. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Darkness the TF, and then it forces them to summon something. It'll probably be something darknessable. So then you can do bulb and then second darkness. You're also turbo leveling Vagar. I'm not sure how close he is, but he's gonna get really close to level. He should be. Three more chat. Three more. I'm only like two damage actually. Wait. I'm confused. Okay, math. I can't do. I don't even remember what my darkness was at. I think it's at four. No. I'm always up for a round or two. Should be. He's killing a my second, roadmaker. Yeah. F. That's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna mini morph into a three three so we can. No, I'm hey. <laughs> Buff the enemy unit. Let's go. Five, all right. I think we actually, we level here. It's actually insane. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And then you're going to blow them out with withering. It's going to be an instant surrender. Play. There's no other yeah. way. Yeah. I really like the trade you did before to lower the one, two down to one HP. So you just have the most valuable withering as possible set up later. You play exactly like a control mage. You really do. I'm a control God. Opponent really hated that rogue maker in particular. Yeah, just perfect timing on that one. <laughs> and then you don't even have to attack. You just, all right. Well, I think I just generate one from the next turn, and then I can start open casting on face. You literally, yeah, you can. So, yep. Yeah. You are good to go. There's not a lot they can do about this. In position. Yeah. Goodbye. I mean, that's just a withering. Mm-hmm. Boom. Take eight, nah, heal one, buddy. Damn it. Goodbye.
He probably has like two decimates in his hand. Yeah. Yep. Tempo mount coaching <laughs> unstoppable. One v nine legend. <laughs> Okay, this is another control matchup, but this one is a lot more unit based than the last one. It's a so fuck, it's a sinking. I, God, I hate sink decks, dude. Yeah, you scared of them? Uh, they go I, deep. I had fucking nightmares. So, uh, <laughs> when I was doing the PvE thing, there was one deck that was sink based, and it was just straight up. If you couldn't win in like five turns, it was over. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. They go deep, level Nautilus on seven, and then just drop big dudes. Do you have any Hearthstone experience, by the way? Uh, I think it got the platinum. I was trying to do an unranked to masters on the LOR. My God! And uh, I had a friend who was like top ten, who coached me for like maybe five games on this deck. Mhm. Mm but that was okay, a, a bit ago. Okay. So the question is, I can generate a darkness, or I can get plus one of my darkness. Mhm. Mm it's just, I always hate losing a 3-2 two to a 2-1 two that's a 1 cost, I, but... It does feel bad. Uh, alternatively, yeah, you could play Catalyzer and then just Pokey stick the 2-1. During and then his maybe attack a Catalyzer, turn. Yeah. Maybe Catalyzer will get a better trade later. Because you definitely want to amp. In this matchup, amping Darkness is your primary goal. Because a lot of the HP thresholds of the sea monsters are 4+. plus, So we okay. need to at least hit 4. So I need to put Catalyzer now, or did you say yeah. Dark Bulb? Okay. Yeah, Catalyzer now is fine. Open swing? Uh, no, we're not going to swing with them. We're going to assume they play Sea Scarab here. And then, yeah, there he is. I'm on a little bit of a delay. And then okay. next turn, we can pokey the Two one. Uh, drag. Yeah. And then block with Catalyzer. Exactly. So the trade's a lot better for you, so you don't feel as bad trading it down into a 2-1. Which I agree, it, that does suck. Trash! Smooth mm. right there you go. We'll do it exactly like that. Perfect. Ah, doesn't that feel a lot better? That's oh, a good trade. Dude, I just got quiet us too. This thing's so broken, holy cow. Ooh. They can hit another drag of theirs if they summon it. So, I can either get information on his hand, or I can develop Dark Bulb. I think the Dark Bulb is the play. I agree with you, yep. Because then I'm floating one mana in the west. Mm-hmm. I can also use the attune to get plus one mana for Quietus while developing board to block. Mm -hmm. That would be super important in an aggro matchup like the one we played before. Open swing? Yes. And then develop. The little boy. My little Don't otter. Don't little though. I, will <laughs> no, I Quietus is... Oh, but I already have a darkness. Damn. Oh, that's okay, because round start, we want to amp. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's the other half of Vagar's ability. Good, my brother's friend. I totally understood that. I wish we could quiet this Maokai, but they recently changed it, so I can't hit him. It only hits units that have four total stat points. Maokai is six. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. Another Scarib. Scarib. Uh, I feel like just Rogue Maker here, but I can also just develop fucking Senna as well. I think I just play Rogue Maker every single time here. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that way we can hit the discount. I want my hat, and I want it now! Lord Vagar, you cannot rush perfection. Your Vagar should be relatively safe. Yeah. What are they gonna grab? Oh wait, they grab Vagar? That's kinda weird. You can... Yeah, 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 that's good. You can also block 2-2 two, two to Maokai. How come so just prevent damage? Not only that, but it'll put Maokai in quietest range. Ooh, oh. That's hot, actually. Mm hmm My god, he's a simp. Yo, Reset, thanks for the follow. I'm just worried that he's gonna get, like, two shot now. It's just, I always play Otter Puss here. Oh well. Yeah, for the mana efficiency. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to play the Quietest anyway, so yeah, you're right. So, I should just Quietest <laughs> right now? Yes, for sure. Oh no. Maokai is like a must-remove unit. It's about the fucking... Wow. That's all right. He's gonna he's gonna do another spiraling. He's about if to he troll has me. another vial, then that's gonna be kind of rough, yeah. Oh, right. it's painful. Pain, Becco. Uh, I'm actually gonna pull another Vagar literally next turn, so I guess it's fine. I'm not even Easiest kidding. For top deck right now. Fuck. 
<laughs> Alright, so I know this seems really, really bad. Actually, it's just bad no matter what. If I had one more mana, I could have actually just done Darkness and just sent another refresh. Yeah, how sick would that be? I could um, swing open and just trade everything on the board. Mm -hmm. I'm down for that, and then prank after. And just like play the turn as slow as possible. You're pretty much reserving mini more for their turn 7, assuming they slam Nautilus, and you just mini morph them on summon. Okay. I think we do just have to play Senna, and then we turn the rest of them to absolutes. What What is the other one? Kill a unit? <laughs> okay. The rot must be cut away. I'm yes. darknessing instantly, actually. Yes. That has changed our play right here. Second, Meowkai. Meow. Meow. A little bit of a Meowkai. Okay. Let's get some information what he's got. Mm -hmm. Mana efficient too, because then we float three. We don't burn any. Uh, ah. kill. Plus two, I assume is always better here. Yep. It's interesting they have Atrocity in hand. Us knowing that is absolutely massive, by the way. That's the best possible card to see from deep. Ooh. You were one off the call. <laughs> There's our big guy. Damn. So I'm going to save Minimorph, Devolve Vagar. Correct. Just oh, open darkness. I could actually just trade here. Mm hmm. Yeah, trade 3-1 and then finish it off in darkness. Oh, Love that. If Vigar makes it the next round, I think we just insta-win, actually. Yeah. Especially based off of uh, their hand. Their hand state's really bad. Yeah, they do have a monster to play, but they need to hit deep and play Nautilus. Mm -hmm. I am going to float one. We'll make them pay. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I think we play Senna, and then we open attack if they don't play anything, even if they play anything. Yep. Generate Darkness, I full attack, and then I can either just have her quick attack and kill the 4-4. Four -four. Mm -hmm. Senna's really cool because she is like a Darkness generator. She just makes them over and over and over, because you can cast Darkness during the attack call and get another one. Wait. Mm -hmm. I haven't upgraded my Not thing face yet. yet, sadly. You can still target the 4-4. Four four. I think it's worth. Okay. Keep your distance. Yep. I thought he could still block here and then fizzle it out. He can. He okay. can, but you're still getting get the a darkness. free darkness. Okay. Yeah. And I upgrade and I just hit face. Yes. Exactly. Guy, I love this animation. <laughs> beautiful art, beautiful animation. I don't think I need to concern myself with that being on the board. I could just remove it, but I feel like I just win next turn. Mhm. Mm Up to you. Yeah. I think with his current hand, he's just got no choice. Mhm. Mm he has Atrocity and one card we don't know. I'm assuming it's Nautilus. Based off of hand read. But it doesn't have to be. I guess it could be something else. Darkness and light. All right, so it's, it's actually just GG. Yeah. Oh, dark ball backlight off the top. Oh my god, it's so much damage. Uh, top deck plate worm. So okay. that's three eight eights, and they're all fierce. That's a pretty good top deck, because now we actually have to care about this. Since he has atrocity in hand, we're never allowed to go. Oh, he's not. They're not eight eights yet because they're not deep. We can never go to five. Well, I can just nerf everything by two this mm -hmm. round. How much does darkness do? Five currently? The six. So I could darkness six. and send a dawning. Jesus. So send a um, dawning, five, five, nerf everything's damage by two, play darkness, and then dark bolt with five mana left over. Yeah. You, you want to be really spicy with it? Do it during combat because it's fast speed. Okay. That way they commit their board as well, and you can block. I'm also gonna develop a dark bulb. Sure. Make the hurt your weapon. Not that I can block anything with it. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Uh, honestly, I think I just let everything else swing. Well, it's gonna go down to two two, so I can actually just kill this straight up. No. 
Yep, and that puts you down to 12. That's fine. You never really have to care about that. And then uh, we just end next turn when we generate. Mm hmm. Yep, because we have darkness and. Uh, Senna. Darkness we can generate four Senna. darkness this turn. Yeah. We get one, we get two, we get three. It's actually disgusting. Mm hmm. You can basically kill them from Keep like, what, distance. 28? <laughs> Something like that? Yeah. Ridiculous numbers. Yeah, and there's quite literally nothing they can do about it. Since this is so mana efficient, if they had like a really big problem, you could literally just mini morph. Uh, actually, he just perfectly top deck. <clears throat> what is that? Keel Breaker? Deal 5 to everything. That's fine. Well, the yeah, thing is, I can't it. hit face anymore after I lose Vagar. That's okay, they're losing all their units too. Okay. Yeah, you just redevelop your units and then swing for lethal. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He's got, yeah, you're right. There's literally no... I'm gonna There's do a Senna too. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Complete annihilation. So what's really cool about that matchup, and it's something you're gonna see a lot with Darkness, is that you are a resource-based control deck. You really care about having more resources than the opponent. See how he was stuck on three cards in hand for like five turns, and you just feel so in control? That yeah. is how that deck performs. That's basically its win con. Yeah. I always take that. So, Sid Vagar? Yeah. Could just roll everything else, technically. The matchup is Team O'Kaitlin, so I think I actually just drop Vagar. Yep, up to you. You can keep or pitch him. The rest Go. of your hand is completely correct. That's the only one that's optional. Okay. <laughs> I'm fucked. I was so unbelievably fucked. Alright. Oh, oh no nasty. turn one! What the fuck? Alright, we win. No Teemo on one? Hey, they're not gaming. Reporting in. Oh, Yo. there he is. Give me your if I got to open swing, that would have been so nice. At least I get the Vile Feasted. Actually, should I just Vile Feasted instead? No. I, I think okay. going for Catalyzer is fine here, because then you're going to do first action swing on three. Oh, no. I've been puff capped. Yeah, I actually really like I really like puff cap decks. Uh huh. They're really strong now. Well, really strong in mid tier, but really really fun. Like you can climb with puff cap up to diamond, even master. Oh no! I know someone that's done it. My Take three. Eh, it's whatever. You should probably sentinel heal back later, but yeah, it's open swing. Yep. Pew. Yes. Yes. Guaranteed catalyzer value. Maybe he gets another strike in. We always want to get more than one strike if possible. One strike makes the card worth it. Two strikes makes that card extremely efficient. All right. So at this point, I only have one option, which is either mm -hmm. float mana or I just remove Teemo from the. Oh yeah, we remove Teemo for sure. Hey yo, and plus one drain. I'm huge. And he's gonna play another Teemo. <laughs> I Actually, he would he would have he would have puff capped if he had it because he's got one mana. <clears throat> yeah, it would have bumped him up. Mm, 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 mm. Another one. All right, pretty sure we road maker here develop for block. Yep. And the next turn I can start, but if I play Vagar, I can start plus oneing that way because he doesn't have a way to remove board. Mm -hmm. And that's really important depending on matchup. This matchup, uh, we don't really need the extra plus one. Having darkness at three is uh, already good enough. And, so, oh yeah, yeah. Catalyzer what, three, two. Yeah. Why, three, why four, we, two, two. Okay, so why do we think he's open swinging like this? Is it just the strike effect? He just wants to put poison cap? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I think that's a really weak board and a really weak attack. Does he have the mushroom smoothie thing? What is it? <laughs> the brew? Oh, purple berry shake. Yeah. No, okay. they would never. So you just removed oh, my room maker. It doesn't matter. Oh, he's got quick no. strike though. Yeah. Okay. So here's a cool thing about get excited and discard stuff. Once it resolves, you should check the scroll on the far left. Click on it, scroll down to get excited, and see what he discarded. Stress defense. Oh, that's actually big for us. It's important to know that. 
Very cool. So they, they lost stress defense. They lost get excited. They get to keep their puff cap pup. I think that's worth for us. That's honestly not even bad. Now they're on two cards in hand. And again, we are a resource based control deck. We care about having more cards than them. They're pretty low already. All right. So I feel like playing Vagar here is correct because I get to develop the plus one and I get a darkness and I've already used a road maker. Correct. So I have enough mana to shit on anything regardless. Mm hmm. Alternatively, I can play Roadmaker this turn, and then next Tali next turn, and then my Darkness would just be one cost. That would be the alternative, but having a Darkness in hand this turn is beautiful for us, so we definitely want the on summon generation of Vagar. Okay. That way, if they play Ava, what? Well, they can't play Ava yet. Ava's on six. If they play Caitlyn, she just dies on summon, which is our next priority target after Teemo. Oh, if mushrooms could talk. I'm going to remove this. Yes, that too. That's our third primary target after champions. Puffcap Peddler is an absolute menace to society. Fuck the Puffcaps. Dude, like, it's so disgusting <laughs> that we... <laughs> oh, no. Their deck is actually pretty good into you, by the way. If they get a solid opener, it actually uh, favors them. Because you have a lot of draw stuff, like the Pokey Sticks. Yeah. yeah, and then you draw more Puffcaps because of it. And your, um, your six mana draw two, I forget what it's called. We need to admit that... We have a drug problem in Room Terra. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lore brought the puff caps uh, in the forefront. Now we know about the black market. I think I play Extali no matter what, just to start getting life steal. I got ways to find me mushrooms. Actually, um, I think it's actually not. We could play this next turn and have cast. Here we uh, we know that our darkness is at. Two, right? Because we resolved the robe maker. Well, it's at four. So I oh, I mean, uh, mana, mana. Okay. Bad. So I think Senna would be the most efficient because she generates one. And then, and we, then we have the mana to play it. Yeah. And then we just kill this guy instant. Exactly. That way we're furthering Senna's uh, level up condition. We're fur uh, getting Vagars up as well Vags. while removing a, a unit from their board. Beautiful. So I'm just overvaluing the life steal. I'm getting nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> starting to sweat a little bit. No, not my Extali again, bro. I want to play a puff cap deck. I'm gonna send you the I best one I have. Please. Okay, I'm, you can I'm gonna, just I'm block gonna... to that. Okay. Moving in. Pong. Ninety-nine percent yeah. sure that um. I'm gonna pull 15 puff caps next turn. <laughs> you can check your deck to see how many you have by clicking on on the left. I have 34 puff caps. Oh god, yeah, so on average two per card. Alright, uh, I'm gonna open swing. Mm -hmm. Darkness and light. Uh, yeah. Right. They're huh. not really in the position to play the game anymore, Love sadly for them. Elf, that's not ours. They actually just can't play. Aloof, make you draw. Keep your distance. Ooh, my We lost the Sentinel, huh? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I guess we'll just play slow and go for max value. It'd be, yeah, Robe Maker as you're hovering. 100% though. No. Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Okay. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's gonna... Fuck it, I'll just level. Yeah, level Vagar, and then next turn you can... Concentrated for uh, shoot face for nine. The voices. You know, like... There's that fucking TV show, Last of Us, where it's about, like, parasites. Mm -hmm. The mushroom fungi thing. <laughs> Puff caps are literally controlling me, man. Yep. Darkness and light. Oh my goodness. No mushroom caps. Yeah, you should definitely play Hidden Pathways here and draw some cards. Okay. That would be extremely beneficial. <laughs> I'm gonna do that right now, actually. I mean, right. you can. He's gonna kill my Vagar, and I can play Vagar again. It's perfect. Oh, that's a harvest Trust. Right do, do not draw cards. <laughs> this will be the one game where like 12 of them are stacked on one. Dear Lord. All right, I'm going to play Withering Whale <laughs> to heal three. <laughs> I think that's a good idea, brother. 
<laughs> I'm starting to sweat a little bit now too. I unironically, I think we gotta go for the just the meme heals. Yeah. On the yeah, off you chance. Heal as much as possible. Because I win next turn anyways. Yeah. yeah. Because honestly, there's cards that they run that make you draw. One of them's called like insightful knowledge or something like that. It forces you to draw two. Now, if they have multiple and you draw four, you can actually die. Not out of the woods yet. GG. That's done. I didn't pull any. Whoa, dude. I have 46 puff caps from my. Mm -hmm. RNG. 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 If you got Let's even go. slightly luckier. Huge <laughs> W. Battle's done. Back to the war. Meow. I love that we're seeing the Vegar Senna top end win cons. Because I actually don't get to see that too often since I play aggro myself. Whenever I fight darkness, I just surrender by turn five. <laughs> <laughs> it feels fulfilling to make it to the end. Uh thank you for your time today. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Ziani's chat. Thank you, my chat, for being here and hanging out, watching us have some fun together in the different Riot games. It indeed has been a absolute pleasure, Mr. Tempo Mount. Thank you for taking me under thy wing and showing me the true beauty of puffcap builds in darkness. Of course, my favorite thing to spread.